Richard and Zach, you wow. heard the well, man. I Kyrie wants all the smoke that comes with facing Kemba in a playoff series. So, Richard, what do you think of that, and who would have the upper hand if they met in the postseason? Look, I, I think one of the few people that we can actually compare Kyrie and his handle and his ability for body control is Kemba. But make no mistake, Kyrie Irving is one of the best offensive players and one of the most complete offensive players this league has seen. He posts up guys that are bigger. I'm not, he's one of the best perimeter players. I'm not talking about point guards, perimeter players in this league. I think it would be a great matchup, but I don't think that's one I would see going well for Kemba Walker. So, so the... The Nets would play the Celtics, right? It's not a one-on-one -on -one game we're talking about. We're talking about a, a team playing another team. In that case, I'm not sure that Kyrie Irving really wants any part of this matchup until Kevin Durant comes back. And when Kevin Durant comes back, whenever that is, then it's a whole different ball game. But I think the Celtics would wipe the floor with the Nets this year. Uh, wipe the I, floor? I heard with the current Brooklyn Nets, yes. I wiped the floor. I don't know. 4-1? Whatever you call 4-1. Gentlemen with sweep. That would, that's what... I'm just checking. You're talking big talk. I'm just checking what you're saying. 4-1. 4-1. Celtics win. But the, Kyrie and Kemba probably play each other to a watch. Uh, I think Kyrie's probably a little bit better of a playoff player just because, as RJ said, he's bigger. He can get his shot off a little more easily. He can get his shot off in different ways. But team matchup, it's Boston this season. When KD comes back, it's a different story. Richard, knowing Kyrie like you know him, are you surprised he went out and said that? No, they're uh, – uh, Kemba's <laughs> from Mount Vernon. Kyrie's a Jersey guy. They grew up – one went to Connecticut, the other one went to Duke. They're, they're East Coast guys. You know, they grew up in that area. So I think they want to see it. The people in, in the community want to see it. I really think that that's how it's being viewed right now. So, you know, look, it's all in good fun. There wasn't no trash talking. He's saying this is what the people want to see, and he hopes at some point in time to give it to the people. From your lips, Richard Jefferson, from your lips. All right, last week, Tim McMahon reported that Rockets coach Mike D'Antoni would coach if the NBA season resumes. Despite that, because he is 69, he is, of course, at a higher risk for serious complications if he contracted COVID-19. Now, Mike did say he would wear a mask on the sidelines while coaching, but Zach, he's not under contract for next season either way. Do you see the Rockets bringing him back to see this Russ and James Harden experiment through? Well, the buzz, as you said, all season the reporting has been that he's in trouble and he's probably not going to get that job back next year. Now, everything is unknown now. Like, whether there are games is unknown now. If the Rockets win the championship, that could change that. But, you know, barring a, a, the Houston really overperforming in the playoffs, getting further than we expect, I do think Mike's in trouble. And I don't think that's fair. I think Mike D'Antoni's done a great job. He's adapted stylistically. He's adapted to different kinds of personnel. They have centers, then they don't have centers. They're running pick and roll. Now they run no pick and roll. Russell Westbrook's coming in. And they've done nothing but win a lot of games. And so I don't know really what the rush is to get rid of Mike D'Antoni. I agree with Zach. I don't know who the new GM is going to be in Houston. Richard. Uh, but, Richard. but I firmly believe what? <laughs> I, I, I don't know who it's going to be, but I think that just GM should Darryl definitely look. that bus? Yeah, Richard just uh, filed, Dar fired Daryl Morey right amazing. on the spot. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that whoever the GM is going to be, he should take a hard look at Dan Tony and talk to the players and talk to management and see what it, and see what he wants to do. And if Dan Tony is still the right guy, look, if the players vouch for him, then that's one thing. But you got to get results, and they've had a ton of talent, and you know they are a hamstring away from possibly going to the NBA Finals. So I don't really think that Daryl, uh, that uh, Dan Tony uh, sh should be just kind of. Uh, cast away. I think you should take a hard look at and whoever the new GM should probably do that. It is such a strange situation because Mike D'Antoni and the Rockets did have an agreement on the table for an extension. So the will to have him continue was there. Um, D'Antoni's agent ultimately decided that it involved so much cost cutting, Zach, I'm going to put it that way. It, it wasn't a good contract for him to sign. It wasn't a good example for other coaches around the league. But now it seems he's definitely on the way out, which is a strange feeling to have about a team that we're also talking is in the title chase. And look, if they don't resume games this season, it's possible we have already seen Mike D'Antoni's last game coaching the Houston Rockets. It is bizarre, but I do know that if he doesn't coach with Houston, I feel pretty good somebody will offer him another job somewhere else. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.